Welcome to another episode of the Top Producer Mindset. I have a special guest here, Enrique Flores. Uh, he's been a loan officer with Equity Smart Home Loans now for about about a year. About now, a year Equity now. Smart, yes. Uh, this this gentleman here, he's impressed me, amazed me. I mean, he's a go getter. He's someone that is extremely special in so many ways, and uh, have nothing but respect for him. He's doing a lot of cool things that we're going to talk about today. And in fact, you know, he's, he's what I really enjoy about Enrique is that, you know, he represents that younger generation that, you know, knows how to take advantage of the technology and tools. And, and, you know, I kind of want to dig into his mind and find out like what drove him, what keeps him there and everything. And let's go ahead and get started. You want to uh, open up with some words? Of course, of course. Well, super happy to be on the podcast today. I've watched a few episodes. They're great. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited to share with people, like you mentioned, you know, what I think about in, you know, making the videos and becoming a loan officer, why I chose a career, why, you know, I do what I do to maybe like, you know, inspire people to, you know, do the same in, in their own field, you know, not everyone watching this and to be a loan officer. So hopefully they can take something from it too. So I'm super excited. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the big question for me is, okay, you decided obviously to probably become a loan officer first, but, uh, Shortly afterwards, you decided to to show people the steps of how to become a loan officer. And then, you know, once you started learning yourself on how to put deals together, then you took it to that. And then you had this ongoing passion to create content to help individuals wanting to get into the lending space to learn more about it and to get curious about it. And, you know, what how did that start and, and why do you keep it going? So I actually, it's funny, um, I presented at UC Santa Barbara a couple of weeks ago on what I do with the YouTube and also as a loan officer. And I was telling them, I didn't know what a loan officer was four years ago, you know? So it's crazy how you can, you can be something that you didn't know existed just four years ago. Yeah. You know? and, and let me interrupt you really quick because yeah. I always joke around it and, you know, you're in high school, you're amongst your friends. Hey, what are you going to do when you graduate? A doctor, a lawyer, all the standard stuff, right? But yeah. no one ever raises their hand and says, oh, I'm going to be a loan officer, right? And I never imagined that I was going to be a loan officer. For me, it was something, if you know my story, something that I stumbled into just out of necessity. Got a job at a bank, got an opportunity in lending. And then from there, I, I, I blew up. If Knowing what I know about lending now, I would have definitely said in high school, hey, I wouldn't mind being a loan officer just because of all the cool things that, that come with it, right? But anyhow. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's what I mentioned to the, to the audience. Like, hey, I had no idea what a loan officer was. I wasn't, you know, a two-year-old, five-year-old in kindergarten. Like, hey, I want to be a loan officer. It wasn't the case. I, just like most people like yourself, and I watched a lot of interviews too, and most people just kind of stumble upon, you know, this career and they see that, you know, has so much opportunity you know, for yourself, but also for other people and what you can do to help them, you know, in buying real estate, which is one of the most, you know, important and powerful investments anyone will ever make in their life. So shortly after graduating from high school, I, I'm sorry, college, I graduated in 2020. So COVID was going on. So it was kind of a weird transition in that not only was I like entering the real world, right? Real life as like, I was, I would tell my dad, like I'm entering real life now right? But COVID was going on. So, you know, the whole world was in, in shock. We didn't have a graduation. You know, everything was closed down. So how do you go look for jobs when everything's closed down? The whole world shut down, you know? And when that was happening, the refi boom was also happening. So my dad was like, hey, you know, I have this, um, this friend. He's a loan officer. He's doing great. You, you know, you should go work for him, be his assistant, see how you like it. They make good money. And at the time, I was, uh, I had an online business. You know, everyone was doing like Shopify businesses back then in COVID. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was selling bracelets and I was making motivational videos on YouTube because at least for me, you know, everyone in their life is gonna, you know, have some kind of desire or pull to something, whether it be acting, singing, sports, basketball. And for me, it's always been helping people. And I think for everyone, it's helping, you know, but maybe some people kind of, you know, want to help in, in, in bigger or in certain ways. So for me, I've always wanted to help. And I've always been a fan of YouTube because it's somewhere where you could go to get information 
you know, and you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to, you know, be from some certain class. You don't need to live in a certain state. Like anyone can go onto YouTube and learn how to bake a cake, how to be an actor. You or know? in my case, fix a roof. I had to patch my roof one time. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so, and, and I grew up uh, with a single mom who didn't know English, right? So I've always had to like go out there and, you know, be resourceful. You know, she couldn't, I couldn't learn how to, you know, do math homework from her, how to read books from her, how to write my name. I still to this day have very bad handwriting. <laughs> And so I always gravitated to YouTube because oh, I was like, it. you know, no one was really there. You know, as much as she wanted to help me, you know, if you don't know English, never went to high school. There's only so much you can do. So I always, you know, was so you would like YouTube. Uh, YouTube or Google math problems and kind of yeah. like approaches so you can make it easier for yourself. Exactly. And all that, you know, made my life so much easier. You know, a lot of what I know I've learned from YouTube. So. I graduated. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be this YouTube star. I'm going to help a lot of people. I'm going to be a motivational speaker. And I was making those videos. I was making the bracelets. But, you know, one thing I learned quickly is, in a sense, you have to, you know, and not in a negative way, but you have to be a somebody for people to listen to you. You have to have done something, some right? Some credibility, some exactly. accomplishments. Like, why should I listen to you? You know, right? Exactly. So I didn't have that. Or I, I thought to myself, I didn't have that. So why are people going to listen to me about, you know, motivation and, and all these things? And I remember, you know, and all this was going on while I was being an assistant to that loan officer. And I remember one day I was, the, the videos weren't obviously doing, I got like 10 views, wasn't selling any bracelets. And at night I'm scrolling through YouTube and I land on this video and it's how to get your mortgage loan officer license. And as soon as I saw that video, it clicked. And I was like, I'm going to be the loan officer on YouTube. And I'm going to help loan officers be the best loan officer possible. And they're going to watch me because it's something that I'm actually going to be doing. And I'm going to be helping a lot of people. And eventually, you know, I'm going to put a lot of work into being the best loan officer. And then I'm going to have that platform where I can become a motivational speaker, where I can write books. So I saw it as an opportunity to help not just the industry, but also accomplish my goals as, um, as a motivational speaker and, you know, writing books and being on stages. So that's kind of how it all planned out where. So, so to me, it sounds like you've had this like desire within you to try to figure something out with YouTube. And you saw this, this bracelet Shopify thing that didn't really pan out. Yeah. And but but I felt like you still wanted to be in that space where you're, you know, you're creating content. Right. And I, I think that's brilliant. Right. Find like a niche area that you're already involved in. And my big guess is that when you were probably looking for content yourself, you probably saw that there was an adequate amount of content. That was and, the and, only video. And, and, <laughs> you're, and you're like, hey, maybe there's an opportunity here. Am I am I right? Exactly. Because so you're that right. Was because video, when I look at yeah. the videos, I don't see that much stuff. And you know, I started looking at your stuff. I'm like, wow, this is great. You're precise. You're concise. You break everything down very patiently. You're very careful how you, you choose your words so that everything, under, you know, you make it very easy to understand and follow your explanations. You're very thorough. That's something that I think people enjoy because you're easy to listen to and you make it easy to understand as well, like breaking it down. Like, wow, you simplify it basically, you know? Yeah. But But that's awesome that, you had in there, you, you nurtured it, you, you brought it out. And, and how did, how did it go from there? Like you started, how, what was your first video about her? It, 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 it went great because like I said, I was making those motivational videos. They looked terrible and I was getting like 10 views. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this now. Let's give it a shot. Another thing. And I'm a big fan of Grant Cardone. And one thing he mentions is, you know, when, if, if there's a vacuum, that's always a huge opportunity, a vacuum in the sense of like, no one was making these videos. And it's also a YouTube strategy and a content strategy. Like, Hey, if no one's making videos on, you know, how to be the best golfer and you make a video, you're going to be at the top, you know? So also, you know, it goes hand in hand with being omnipresent, right? If you, if you want to be successful, like Apple, McDonald's, in and out they're everywhere. So if you're the only one doing what you're doing, you're obviously going to be everywhere, right? So the first video I made was how to get your license. And that one blew up. And I was like, okay, I hit the target. I got a fish. 
I got a bite. And I started just like dumping a bunch of videos. Like, hey, I'm just going to do, you know, two videos a week, a video a week on what I'm learning as a loan officer. Like I would learn something that Tuesday, that Wednesday, and that Saturday or, you know, Sunday, I would go and film a video on what I learned. And were these just sitting out there organically or were you boosting them in any way? You would just kind of put the content and it was searchable and found by other loan officers that were just looking or was there anything special you did to draw that att uh, attention or attraction? Not necessarily. It, well, it wasn't any, any boosting. It was just all natural. You know, I didn't pay any ads. It was just a lot of like research. And again, going back to YouTube, hey, how do you, you know, make a thumbnail? How do you pick the perfect title? And another thing that I learned from Grant is, you know, to get to, to get to quality, you have to go through quantity, right? I think you can agree with that. Like you got to bake a thousand cakes before you bake the perfect cake. So I already knew that. And I was making all these videos and I think I've made over 120 videos now, like long form YouTube videos. And now I know I can post a video and be like, that's going to perform great or it's not going to perform great. I already know what content the people like. I already know what kind of thumbnails, what kind of editing they like. But the only reason I know all those things is because I made so many videos and I saw the reactions from people. It's great. And that actually reminds me of me and Abigail when, you know, I, I'm not a big, you know, social media. In fact, I think around the time that you were getting into the loan business, I was trying to just get myself into more social media. And, you know, I, I don't even want to look at my early videos because I was probably a mess. <laughs> And Abigail can testify to this. And if you guys are listening, Abigail is oh our, goodness. our social that media tech that. I'm person. Say something to that too, yeah. yeah. And and I did exactly what you said, what you just talked about. I just kept, let's just do it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And uh to the point where you just start naturally getting good. Another yeah. awkward thing was for me was doing my Zoom trainings and just looking at a camera. It just felt weird, right? And uh, but but once mentally I got past all that then I was able to perform and, and think clearly and not be thinking about all these other things, you know, really be thinking about the, what is coming out of my mouth versus being nervous and what are people thinking? What am I talking to? And, you know, who's yeah. out there? And I always tell people just practice. You just got to practice. So I'm glad that you brought that up. You know, uh, that's a great takeaway for this episode. If you guys are listening, don't know where to get started, just start doing videos. And, you know, a lot of them, what I tell people is lock them up, throw them away because your earlier ones probably suck anyways. But after you do, you know, maybe 20, 30 and you feel really good about a good one, then post that one, right? Put yeah. that one in and then see what it does. But but I think, you know, for my generation, it's a little harder for us. I don't know if for you, it's just a little bit more natural because you kind of already had the technology in place. Uh, and, and that's great because, you know, for us as loan officers, having access to, you know, free social media content, I don't even know this, but like, you know, in 2001, 2002, the only way I could be known was paying newspaper yep. ads, radio, TV. radio, and those things were expensive, you know? So now yeah. I tell people, Hey, create your content. It's free. Uh, and, and learn the whole process. And for me, it sounds like you even delved further than the normal person where now, you know, what things are, uh, what type of edits people like, what people are looking for, how to say things and all that. And all that comes through trial and error. So I'm, that's really awesome. You know? Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Of course. So yeah, and I think another point about social media, because like you mentioned, it is important as a loan officer, really any business, whether you sell hamburgers, hot dogs, you know, coffee shop, whatever, you need to like embrace social media. There's just no way that, I mean, you could probably be a little successful with without being on social media, but it's just going to make things so much easier for your business. So every loan officer has to be on social media, even if it's just a little bit, you know, get in front of the camera. and you know, don't worry too much about what people think. Cause I get a lot of friends too. Like Henry, how are you making these videos? Like my first ones were terrible. Like, I don't know what was going on with my hair. <laughs> I was looking like an Oompa Loompa. The colors were off, you know? So they were terrible. And I mean, in a sense, it is easier for, you know, the younger people to get on camera, but also it's a little harder in the sense you're thinking, what are my friends going to think? Right. That kind of like that social embarrassment. You know, so I feel like th there's also that factor for us, the younger people like, hey, are my friends going to roast me? Um, at least for me. And I was like, do you have all these friends like. Um, 
maybe some girls. I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but like, let me tell you, you're doing great. So you have nothing to worry yeah, about. You're, you're... I'm like, man, I'm like this girl I'm talking to, she's going to see this. She's going to be like, dude, Enrique's crazy. What is he doing? Like, what is he wearing? What's up with his hair? What is he saying? <laughs> but it's like, you got to push through that for your business. And also, you know, one thing I, I shared and when I spoke to the, the kids in Santa Barbara was if you care about something, then all the noise is going to like disappear. And for me, like even with those motivational videos, no one was watching them. I looked terrible. They were terrible videos. But I actually truly felt like I was helping people. And that, you know, put me in front of the camera, you know, help me, you know, push the button to hit upload without being like, you know, I'm not going to upload it because, you know, Bob or Joe or Jane is going to see this video. So I think that's another important thing to hone into as well is, you know, you're making this content to help people, to help someone, you know, help the person at the other end. So that's always really pushed me to make the content is knowing that someone else is, you know, that someone else needs that, you know, video. Yeah. And, 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 you know, just to piggyback off of that, this is actually why we're doing these top producer mindsets, because we want to create content and invite guests like yourself that are doing extraordinary things that, you know, maybe a lot of people are not doing. And maybe it's an inspiration, a motivation because you're having huge success with it. If we fast forward to what's happened now, you know, you got to meet us. I think we're a great company and uh, I know you're enjoying yourself here. We, you know, we're, we're a really good platform. And then from there, you know, now uh, you just got uh, uh, invited to be interviewed at NMP Magazine, National oh, yeah. that was Mortgage fantastic. Professional Magazine, if you guys haven't heard of it. So he's featured there now. So all these doors have just opened up. And I think you at such a young age are just going to continue to open up for you and and just keep doing what you're doing. I think it's going to be amazing for you. And let's let's talk about that for a minute. How did that go? The I know they approached you. They're looking for you know, you know, us old farts, they don't care about us anymore, right? They want to know what the the younger generation and how you guys yeah. are getting into this business and, you know. Yeah, so that was fantastic. It was actually, um, you know, inspired by yourself as well. And, you know, I think it, it goes into like being in, you know, being at a company, you know, being part of a group where, you know, everyone is striving to be their better self. Everyone's striving to, you know, to do great things because had you not been on, on that magazine, because you were also featured. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I got featured. Yeah. I was, I mean, I was, I made front page. I thought it was so cool. Yeah. It'd no. have been nice. If it would have been like the fortune, which is the Forbes. I guess. Forbes. Yeah. yeah. That's my Time next magazine. one. That's my next one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you were actually on there, you know, and that, you know, just like anything, you know, success, you know, a lot of people say, you know, negativity is contagious, but like success is also contagious. Right. So I saw, I was like, dude, that's awesome. And, you know, I always had that in the back of my mind too, like Time Magazine, Forbes Magazine. Um, so, I reached out and I was like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. And they're like, we, we think you'd be a perfect, you know, candidate for the most connected mortgage professional of 2024 because of what you're doing on YouTube. You know, the the audience is there. I have about 10,000 followers on YouTube. And I'm pretty sure most of them are loan officers. You know, not too many other people are interested in those videos. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's a big, you know, it's a big audience of of loan officers. And yeah, it was great. You know, it, it was a lot of hard work, but, you know, things, things just, you know, I think another, you know, important point here for, for loan officers or anyone in business is you, you got to put in the hard work, you know, the weekends, the days off, and then you may or not, you may or may not even get to the top of the mountain and you got to know that and you got to be willing to risk that. And then, you know, you'll get to the point where you're on that magazine. So it just happened to be, you know, that hard work for the past three years, just finally three years later, you know, was shows you know, up. It, yeah. it shows up. Yeah. And, and that's great. Congratulations on that. And my hopes for you is that it just continues to open more doors for you. And, and you know, the, if the whole training thing is, 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 you know, in your passion, I think that's something that you can definitely pursue. There's a huge need in our industry especially now that we're more virtual and people are wanting to learn things online and not really go into an actual classroom. Yeah. There's, I think going to be more and more opportunity for you to even develop and grow that niche, you know, and who knows where else it'll take you to, you know, but uh, let's, let's switch gears a little bit and let's talk about you as a loan officer. You know, what's your experience been like? Are you enjoying, you know, the, the nature of the business? I, you know, I'll, I'll bring up four things really quick and then I'll let you talk. Yeah. You know, when I got into the industry as a young buck, uh, be honest with you guys, 
I was driven mainly by the big commissions. You know, if you're in your mm-hmm. 20s and you're making 20, 30,000 bucks a month. Yeah. And you grew up in a poor community. That's, you know, you hit the lottery, right? Exactly. And, you know, and so I kept doing that. But then I also realized as, as time went by and the technology improved that I had control of my time. You know, I, had, I, I started a family and now I could go in and make sure I didn't miss any of my kids' plays and participate and be more present to my family because of the nature of how our business works, right? And then as the technology kept improving, now I had mobility. We have mobility, meaning that now we can work pretty much work from anywhere. So we, and you know, and the last thing that I really enjoy now that in my in my older age is just uh, the ability that we have to work on ourselves. And it's not even the ability, That's but true. it's 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 required for you as a loan officer to continuously invest in yourself, develop yourself. And and become a better version of yourself because you are the machine. You are the one that's providing the service. And the well, the better trained you are, the more knowledgeable you are, then the better service you can provide. And those 100%. are the four things that I've gotten out of this that's kept me here. That for me, honestly, has been a blessing. And I hope you get to experience all those if you haven't already. Oh yeah. But definitely. but that's that's I think that's you know when people come into this industry now, and I think there's a bigger attraction for people to become loan officers because. You get a lot of the top things that are people are looking for in careers. They're looking for all those things that I just mentioned. And I think we're one of the few careers where you're not really required to be anywhere. As long as you have a cell phone connection and, and computer, you're you're in business. And you can exactly. be in business pretty much yeah. anywhere you want. Let's talk about you as a loan officer. <laughs> all right. So me as a loan officer is actually very interesting because, you know, what I do as a loan officer, I always have, you know, whether it be in the back of my head, the side of my head or the front of my head, you know, not just how can I make my business better? How can I make more money? But also, you know, how can I be that ideal loan officer? Because for me, you know, you know, five days from now, or, you know, let's say it's a Monday in a few days from now, I'm going to have to make a video on what I learned that week. So I feel like, you know, my approach to the business is very unique. It's very much, I would say, maybe even like a scientific approach. So it's kind of like twofold because you're you're providing the service, but in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, I also got to create content based on what I'm doing right now. Exactly. Content in the sense of like, you know, what does it truly mean to be a good loan officer? So as I'm going about my days, I'm also, you know, thinking about that. Hey, you know, I got this deal. I did this. I got this win. but you know, what can I do to make that better? You know, what, what is the ideal loan officer conversation look like? What does their business look like? And the reason I'm thinking all those things is because, you know, I'm also building this, you know, this training business, this YouTube business. And I would say that's a good and a bad thing because if I were just, you know, just 100% focused on, on, you know, the money or the commission, then I would probably, I think, you know, get to, you know, top producer status a lot quicker, but because I'm doing it in the sense of, you know, how can we do things where the client is super satisfied, you know, super satisfied, super educated, super knowledgeable. It's a smooth ride. And so I just dig deeper into things. I dig a lot deeper into, you know, if it's like for me, if something even goes a tiny bit, like it's not even terrible, but like a small inconvenience, The whole week, I will think, hey, how can I make sure that never happens again in my business? And how can I teach that so it doesn't happen to other people in their business? Can can you have an example of maybe something that you thought of lately, that uh, quick example? Yeah, so an example would be, uh, ooh, there's so many. I mean, (laughs) there is so many. uh, I mean, I would just say, like, communicate know and communicate like you know do your homework on the back end and always always ask questions always ask questions because the thing about this business too and the reason i can't give you one thing is because there's so much to this business right like i make a video i made a video the other day and i was talking about how like there's so much to learn you gotta learn about politics economics the fed interest rates divorces you gotta learn about credit income taxes you know, what's going on overseas. Like you need to know all these things. So really all you can do is like you said, always, you know, improve yourself, always grow, always, you know, read books, self-improvement because you need to know all these things. And at the end of the day, believe it or not, 
you need to know those things to be able to have a successful transaction just to do a loan. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I always tell people that we wear so many hats and you know the the, the latest thing we are is content creators. You know, you have yeah. like you said we have if a, a good loan officer should be creating content. And you know, when I signed up for this, I thought I was just writing loans, but you know, your marketing, your funding, your operations, you're almost a mini business within yourself because you got to see everything from beginning to end. And all I the way to the janitor. It, all the way to your right. And yeah. then, you know, the marketing pieces is, is, is important because you got to get known, you got to get your name out there. And I think something that you've gotten really good uh, for the audience. How, how much time would you say you spent developing these videos per week if you had to give it an hour, like an hourly? I would say so for the YouTubes. So there's two type of content I do. This is a long form YouTube content, which is just geared for loan officers. You know, things I've learned and things that they can do to make their business better. It takes me about a video will take me 30 minutes to film. Once it's chopped up, it's maybe, you know, a 15 minute video. And then the editing maybe takes two hours. Now, when it comes to the short form, which is something that everyone can do, all, you know, loan officers, what I do is I make scripts, 12 scripts. And what really helps is reading your guidelines. Loan officer, a new loan officer has to read his guidelines. So read your guidelines and you'll get ideas for content. And another th great thing about making content like the short form is it makes you a better loan officer. Like one thing I didn't know is that like roughly real estate doubles every 15 years. So when I'm having conversations with clients, you know, I can slip that in. I'm more knowledgeable because I'm learning all these things, uh, you know, as I'm making the content. So make sure you batch the content. The I can make 12 shorts in maybe 12 minutes. Right. And I'm sure there's for people that want to get started, they can find videos on how to just edit and all that stuff too, just to work themselves to a place where they can feel comfortable doing their own content. If they don't have the money right currently to hire an editor or a person that can help them with that, correct? Exactly. So in the beginning, I did everything. You know, again, go to YouTube, you know, learn how to make shorts, learn how to make YouTube videos, do it on your own. And eventually you'll get to that point where you'll master it. And then you'll get to the point where you can pay someone. Like I've gone to the point where the shorts, I pay someone to to edit those for me. Got it. Got it. That makes more sense. Well, uh, I think we're getting close to wrapping this up. Enrique, it's been a pleasure having you Thank here. You. I, 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 you're just a wealth of knowledge and information. And, and I think I think this was really impactful. I think we got a lot of uh, good stuff out there. Any last words for us, for the audience? Uh, 100%. So a few last words to the, particularly the the new loan officer is hang in there. Don't underestimate this industry or this business because there's a, like I said, there's a lot to learn and always, I said this in a recent video, always reach for data. You know, when something's going wrong, reach for data, ask questions, bug me, bug Pablo, bug your, bug your rep because the, you know, what's in between you and the solution is data, the answer. So reach for it. Don't think this business is not for you just because you're struggling. We all struggle, you know, get the data. It's not, uh, because it's going bad, it's not that it's not your destiny. You know, go out there, ask those questions. And, you know, it, it's going to take some time. You're not going to be a great loan officer in two months. Yeah. And, and I, one thing I want to mention with you, because it just came to my mind is, you know, you got to be a driven person because we're, you know, we're all on our own. We don't have a boss. We don't have a supervisor. So all this stuff you got to learn. You got to go on, get online, learn all this stuff, you know, take action. And, the, you know, the same freedom that we're enjoying being a loan officer is the same freedom that can hurt you because it can make you lazy. You're not focused. You're sitting on 100%. the couch. So, so take the time to learn. It's, it's an investment you're making on yourself. You're building equity in yourself. You're helping the, your customers build equity. So you got to do that for yourself. This is how you're going to be successful. This is how you're going to grow. Enrique, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, and oh, yeah. Uh, and if uh, someone's trying to find you, yeah, can you give us your... Absolutely. Social media handles and yeah. So on YouTube, I am Enrique and Greatness. On Instagram, it's also Enrique and Greatness, and TikTok, it's also Enrique and Greatness. And you'll you'll catch me there. You guys have to sub subscribe if you're an aspiring loan officer, new loan officer, even a seasoned loan officer. Exactly. You, there's you know you guys got to check out his his content. It's great. I love it. Really clear, really concise, like I mentioned before. And uh, thank you so much again for being here. Appreciate 100%. it. One hundred percent. Thank you guys. Oh, 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 oh,